Welcome to DEF CON 3. I'm KT McFarland. With the White House looking to start a new chapter in relations with Cuba and the Castro regime, how are leaders in Havana looking to use this breakthrough to their own advantage? And now that the opening is happening, are the chances for democracy in Cuba now dead? Well, joining us to discuss are the American Enterprise Institute's Roger Noriega, and Heritage Foundation's Anna Quintana. Let me turn to you first, Roger. Um, how are the Cubans going to use this to their advantage? Well, certainly uh, Raul Castro got a hell of a Christmas present from President Obama. You, you know, uh, presidents before have considered uh, what to do with the Cuban embargo or Cuba policy, but none of them uh, came around uh, to making unilateral concessions as a way of getting uh, uh, progress or uh, uh, respect for democracy uh, out of the Stalinist regime in Havana. I imagine that the Cuban people uh, feel abandoned. As a matter of fact, we don't have to imagine that. They've said so. Uh, key uh, dissidents have expressed uh, their disappointment in this. One said that he had met with President Obama personally in the Oval Office who assured him that he would be consulted on any changes. Uh, and unfortunately, he was not. Uh, and that's the deep, uh, uh, heartfelt concern that I have about this whole initiative. You have people talking realpolitik and, and uh, the uh, benefits of engagement and trade, but what's going to happen with the Cuban people? And my concern is they're going to be forgotten. Uh, the cause uh, for human rights will be forgotten by the government uh, of the United States, which was uh, one of their principal allies. And we're going to align our policy with that of Latin America and the Caribbean, which is to say, do nothing, engage the regime and not the people. Okay, let me ask you then, Anna, what happens with the, with the Cuban people? I mean, are they just the odd man out on this? Are they losing everything? Um, no chance for democracy, I guess. And what about any chance for economic improvement in their daily lives? Well, it's, I, I agree with what Ambassador Noriega has said. It's the, the chances for a democracy on the island have really significantly diminished. And in terms of economic prosperity on the island, you only have to consider that the Cuban military owns and runs a tourism industry, and that's one of the areas that the president has said is going to be used to bring, you know, to engage Americans with Cubans so Americans can have more access to Cubans. But considering that it's illegal for the average Cuban national to even go into a tourist area, to go into a tourist hotel, I'm not sure if the president realizes there's not going to be much engagement and much cooperation. And also echoing what Ambassador Noriega mentioned about how the Cuban dissidents do feel completely slighted, the daughter of slain um, dissident, Oswaldo Paya, penned an open letter to President Obama this weekend in the Washington Post saying exactly wh what she truly felt about these concessions and, and the fact that they are concessions and how legitimate the leader of, of Cuba, Raul Castro, someone who now the president is referring to as a president, someone who was never elected, who the only reason why he's in charge is because he is the brother of Fidel Castro and another individual who was never elected. And what the president has done is essentially he's legitimized the regime. He's legitimized over half a century of hostility to both the United States, foreign countries, our allies, and the Cubans themselves. You know, if we look around the world, um, the, what America is supposed to do is encourage democracy in other countries. But um, Ambassador Nor Noriega, do you think then the Cuban people ever go to the polls? Are they ever going to have an opportunity to choose their own leaders? And particularly with the idea that these Castro brothers are pretty old. What happens after them? Who chooses the new leaders of Cuba? Well, of course, the United States apparently is giving up on the cause of freedom and human rights, so they can pay uh, lip service to that. But I really doubt that President Obama uh, will be vigorous in any way in the next two years when he hasn't paid attention to the issue in the last six. So the cause of, of democracy and moving in that direction hasn't been advanced at all. Uh, by his uh, moves, uh, his uh, pursuit of a, uh, a photo op uh, with, uh, with Fidel, with Raul Castro. Uh, but the good news is, quite frankly, uh, the Cuban regime depends on uh, Venezuela uh, for its survival. Uh, and uh, that uh, regime is tanking, too. Uh, it's collapsing under the weight of its ruinous policies and these uh, uh, falling oil prices. So they've already cut by more than half of uh, their oil subsidies to, to Cuba. So it can't uh, hang on forever. And I, I hope that the United States doesn't throw uh, an economic lifeline to either one of these regimes. Uh, and so eventually you'll see uh, progress uh, in, in, the, uh, in, in the direction of giving people uh, that uh, voice in their own future, making uh, decisions about their economic future and their political leaders. Anna, let me turn to you for the final word. 
What about the Cuban people? Are they going to have more of an opportunity to participate in an economy? Are they going to have jobs? Will they see their own standard of living rise now that we'll have relations with the United States? Well, you just have to look no further than just last year, Cuba's new foreign investment law that many Americans were heralding as a great, you know, new opening to the island explicitly forbids Cuban nationals from participating in any sort of foreign commerce, in any sort of commerce with foreign entities. So I don't necessarily understand how there's going to be that increased economic engagement with, you know, these new commercial transactions the president is lauding. I find it to be very difficult for the average Cuban who's not either in the political or military leadership to really benefit from this, frankly. And it's, it's very, it's, it's really quite sad. Okay, well, thank you both for joining us. That's Ambassador Roger Noriega of the American Enterprise Institute. And Anna, thanks for joining us from the Heritage Foundation. That's it thank for DEF CON 3. And if you want to know more about what's going on with Cuba and this evolving and developing story, go to foxnews.com.